The intention for this Mass is for the repose of the soul of Angel Fernandez. We our morning Mass in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we now acknowledge our many sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred Eucharist. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really sinned in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. We are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have in return. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O oh God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, 
but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly. The elders, the chief priests, and the scribes be killed, and the third day be raised. Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. Turn and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit will there be for one to gain the whole world? And forfeit his life. Or what can one give in exchange for his life? The Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. So, God has chosen messengers throughout the entire history of our world. Since the beginning, when the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, He's always sending out people ahead. A lot of the times, these messengers are mistreated, they're abused, they're laughed at, they're ridiculed, they're not listened to, they're driven away, they're threatened with death, and many of them are martyred. Because they dare to simply say, I'm preparing the way for the one who is to come. There is love out in this world, and it comes from God Almighty. And that this source of love will bring us great pain and suffering. And that's what really bothers us about being disciples of Christ, the suffering part. Well, sure, we love it when things are going great, when we have the sacraments, when the kids make their first communion, and confirmation pops along, and marriage day is fantastic. But it's all that other stuff that living, living as a disciple of Christ, living as someone of the faith, living as someone who has said, you know, I call myself Catholic and that appears to be a bad word anymore. No one quite knows what that means. No one wants to actually defend what it's supposed to be. They think it can be all encompassing and universal like it is, but they don't really want to be universal in its acceptance. They don't want to be living in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That becomes a problem. God's way with his chosen messengers can seem like a very strange thing. He picks these people, and for a long time, nothing is said. They just go about doing what they feel compelled by the Holy Spirit to do. This becomes an issue for people. But God has never told a lie. God is incapable of a lie. Truth speaks truth. There's nothing more true than what is God. But while God is perfectly good, it can appear that We are very fickle in our own way of interpreting God's truth. We like to pick it apart and apply it to our own situations. We think that somehow 
God is going to listen to us, that somehow God is going to obey us, which is exactly what we have today with Peter. After Jesus Christ again is telling the disciples, listen, I am going to go and have a hard time coming up. It is going to be downright barbaric and ugly what they do to me. I will suffer greatly and die before your eyes, but I will rise in three days. They didn't quite get that. And here we have Peter bringing Jesus away from the group so he can counsel our Lord. Now mind you, Peter has always had his questions, as you know. But now he decides that maybe we've got to have like a man-to-man -man talk, you and I. Because, buddy, I don't know what you're doing. But you cannot possibly do this. God forbid, he says, this ever happens to you. And Jesus immediately says, you're speaking out of turn. You're speaking as though someone who does not understand the word of God, nor the life of a Christian. He says, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. Now in our day and age, there are many obstacles in front of you and I. So many things get in our way of common sense, get in the way of living a life of love, get in the way of being a good disciple. We have found more things now to complain about than ever in our history of life. We like to express our opinions whenever we can. But very rarely are those opinions back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because rarely do you ever see someone say, get behind me, Satan, you are being an obstacle to me. Very rarely do we ever see people actually look at the sacred scriptures and say things like this, St. Paul said to the Romans one day, by the mercy of God, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age but be transformed by the very renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Because if we spend all of our quality time, which last I checked is still 24 hours a day, if we spend all of our time not discerning the will of God, but trying to put our own way of life into things, if we do not allow ourselves to conform to this age, but instead allow God to change us every day, then we don't find ourselves in the predicament we're in. We don't find ourselves having to make choices that go against not only our own conscience for the will of God, but divide family and friends. Because let's face it, many of us are conforming ourselves to whatever is going on at the time. Because we somehow think it's more pleasing to be accepted by our brothers and sisters than to be accepted by our God. Because we're betting that God is just going to like say, oh, I understand, it's fine. Come on into heaven. Well, if that was true, then Jesus Christ would have never gone to the cross. Because what part of being a human being, a disciple of Christ, did we ever think in our mind and heart that we would not suffer? That we would not have the pain of being a disciple of Christ? Because every single one of the disciples suffered greatly, did they not? Not only did they have their own trials and tribulations of trying to become disciples, but when they got the shot, the chance, they turned their back at our Lord and denied they even knew him and ran away. Then after they saw it was true that he was going to suffer greatly, he was going to die and he rose again, he pops up into their room and says, here I am, peace be with you. And now they've got to go and do the thing that God asked them to do. Do not conform yourselves to an age. Transform your lives by the will of the gospel. Discern what is the will of God in your heart and do what is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, I don't know about you, but that takes all my time and energy every single day to try to be good and pleasing and perfect to God. I do not have time to waste on the things of this world that do not have God in it. If it does not even remotely resemble the loving, caring individual God who takes us on as children and says, I love you, you are perfect, and I want you to remain that way, then we should not have any time, put any effort, or our hard-earned money into it. Because we must be good and pleasing and perfect to our God. That is the only way to live the will of God. We don't want to be an obstacle to our God, do we?
We don't want to be like Peter and say, you know, God forbid this happens to you. Behind me, Satan, don't think like man. Think like God. Do all that is pleasing to his will. This world will be wonderful. Let's now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. God for God, light for light, true God for true God. We got not made, consistent with the Father. From all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. Ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son, he is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic, the Apostolic Church. I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Now look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the Lord come. Amen. We now present our prayers and needs to God, our loving Father. Pope Francis, Bishop Duane, and all priests, deacons, and religious, that the Holy Spirit continue to give them the grace and strength they need to proclaim the good news to those who have not heard. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear prayer. For a special increase of vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, so that all generations will pro proclaim God's love for us, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear prayer. For those who are suffering mentally, physically, and economically during this pandemic, that they will find help during this crisis, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear prayer. For all of our relatives and friends who have died, especially those who have died from the virus, that they may be welcomed by the angels and the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear prayer. For the special intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts and minds. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear prayer. Let me follow up the prayers these days here gathered at this church. Offer them through our minds, our voices, and our hearts. And will you hear them as a recording to your living will? It's for always through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you. And the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering of Lord confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates a mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you know it belongs to your boundless glory. You came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and in fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself. The cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray now join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, and God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, and Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he willingly into his passion, took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more in thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save the world, for by your cross and resurrection has set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Come, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant you peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, coming of our Savior, through Jesus Christ. Lord, in Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God, O Him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread and heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God continue to bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and come, we pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, and the power of God, cast it out Satan and all the spirits, through throughout the world, to save the ruin of souls. 